Hey YouTubers, I've been doing a lot of cleaning on these pistons out of that 300,000 mile 4.8. I can tell you right now, even using the oven cleaner technique, these things were, they were a formidable adversary. I've got them almost completely clean now. I do still have to do some final, we'll call it scrapings of the ring lands. I tried to completely scrape the ring lands before I even started the cleaning process. Uh, apparently I didn't either, either I didn't do a good enough job or there was so much in there that, you know, I'm going to have to go back and do it one more time, which isn't a big deal, but I did get these things cleaned up significantly, uh, you know, or other than that little bit of crud that's inside the couple of the ring lands, these things are you know, as new condition here. I've got them cleaned up nice. You know what I mean? They're, they're ready to rock, even down inside. Because I want to try to get out all that burnt oil and all that crap as I can. I've got the pins oiled. That's something you guys need to remember when you're cleaning your pistons up. If you expose them to water of any of any kind or any amount, be sure to lube that pin when you get done working on it because those things will rust inside of there and get stiff. It's not that you can't fix it and get it to move again, but they will literally get stiffer than you don't know what if you don't keep those pins lubed during the process. But the purpose of this video, as I was working with these pistons late last night, making a huge fuming mess because I end up doing the last four pistons in the sink in the kitchen. Thank goodness for the vent hood that can suck all that stink out of there. Uh, side note for everybody that wants to use the uh, oven cleaner to clean their engine parts, their cylinder heads and stuff like that. You can probably use it on a block too. I just never have. Go to Walmart and get the great value heavy duty uh, oven cleaner. Because I've been kind of proponent, I've been kind of pushing the name brand Easy Off Oven Cleaner. The last two uh, trips to the store to buy that Easy Off, that stuff's pretty weak. I don't know if they've changed their formula. I don't know what's going on, but where I was purchasing it, it's not very strong anymore. But I picked up on a different YouTuber's video that they were having good success, and I could see in their video that the great value oven cleaner looked to be working like I, the easy off used to, I guess, if I had to put it that way. Anyway, ran to Walmart, grabbed two or three cans of it, just so I could have some on the shelf. Definitely worth it. $2.74 plus tax. I cleaned all eight of these pistons and I still have, you know, a quarter of a can left. So yeah, Big thumbs up for the great value heavy duty uh, oven cleaner at Walmart. Way cheaper. Instead of being $5 a can, it's only $2.74. So, no brainer there. Moving back to my bouncing brain here. The reason why I wanted to make this video was I wanted to talk about the torque specifications, or more specifically, the torque procedure for the LS rod bolts. That's of course, some of you may not know, but most of you probably will if you're watching this video. When you torque an LS rod bolt, it's a combination of a torque spec to begin with. Then you finalize the fastener clamping force with an angle, a percentage of 360 degrees. You're gonna have an angle so you're going to need some way to measure your angle, whether it be a torque angle gauge, a high, a real expensive um, electronic torque wrenches can measure torque angle. But just be aware that with the LS rods, you traditionally do 15 foot pounds of torque on each fastener. Then you turn that bolt an additional 85 degrees of rotation and you leave it. Okay, I am not downing that process. I'm not even doubting its uh, effectiveness. I just hate the fact that you have to have a special tool to do it. 
So after watching one of the sloppy mechanics videos and doing some forum research online, I wanted to learn a little bit more about these fasteners and this 85 degree method. So basically kind of got into a neat little conversation online with a, I, I believe he was a structural engineer. Somehow he used to work for Holly. So I'm not real sure how that all went together, but what he was saying is when these rods and bolts are first created, when they are founded, they are made to a specification set up by the engineering team to provide the needed clamping force for this particular application. I said, okay, that sounds cool. You know, sounds like it's out of a manual, but what does that actually mean? He basically was saying to me, it is common for people to reuse these torque to angle bolts. And as me and you, we all know, how many people have you seen reuse these bolts? And as far as I know, haven't reported any, any problems or if they had a problem, they didn't tell anybody. But in his uh, logic, I guess, or in his uh, engineering mind of structural integrity and uh, molecular breakdown of the actual fastener material. It started getting a little deep for me, but I'm just trying to get to the nitty gritty of, okay, beyond all that, what are you saying? So what he's saying is, is when that bolt is brand new and assembled at the factory or by a technician, you know, I'm not saying it has to be at the factory, but when it's assembled for the first time, it provides a given clamp force, okay? So he goes on to say, you could reuse that fastener, but by using your predetermined 15 foot-pounds of torque plus 85 degrees, every time you use that torque method on that torque to angle bolt, after the very first time that it's been uh, torqued down, it will never give the same clamping force that was originally designed into the bolt. I was like, okay, okay, I think I follow what you're saying. It makes sense, but let's kind of look into this. You know, I'm like, okay, if people are reusing them and they're still working, then what, you know, what is the variance here? Do we have like some kind of a production variance? Is there a situation where the material they use for the bolt is allowed to relax, then be restretched without a fatigue or with less fatigue? You know, I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist. I, I don't know. So I was just basically kind of picking his brain and he was just saying by design, even if you went down to the molecular structure of the bolt material that they use, it was designed for a specific purpose to provide a specific clamping force that once you have stretched that bolt, because basically what you're doing when you tighten a fastener or a bolt, you're using an inclined plane, which is you know basically machined into the threads of the fastener and into either a nut or the uh, piece of machinery that you're screwing it into, it actually pulls and stretches that bolt by force applied through an inclined plane. Okay, so that got a little deep, went back to high school, college, whatever. Bottom line is that bolt will never hold as tight as it did when it was very first put in. Okay, if we follow that same technique, of starting out with 15 foot pounds and then just turning that thing 85 degrees and running it. Clearly people are doing it and it's running down the road, but it's not in the, it's not clamping as hard or as strongly as it was originally intended. I'm assuming it's got to be within some kind of variance, tolerance variance or, you know, window of this will work or it wouldn't be working. So I wanted to do a quick little test on my bench, I wanted to find out when you turn this thing, if you start at 15 foot pounds 
and turn that fastener 85 degrees, how many foot pounds is that? Okay, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, sloppy mechanics with his expensive, you know, high dollar electronic beeping slash, you know, it'll do everything. It'll do torque angle, all that crap, but he chooses not to. He has determined that the LS rod bolts, when you follow the torque plus angle procedure, ends up at 53 foot pounds of torque. He said that of all the ones he's tested with his fan, fan dangled machine or torque wrench, that they all end up between 51 and 53 foot pounds. Gen 3 and Gen 4 all use the same size rod bolt. There is an asterisk or a note or warning that it is believed that the LS9 and maybe the LS7 have a different size, like larger rod bolt. I cannot attest to that because I haven't looked into it, but I just wanted you guys to know ahead of time that this video is purely for the uh, Gen, Gen 3 and Gen 4 uh, 11 millimeter fastener on the rod. So I'm going to set up a little test real quick, show you my finding, because I don't want to give away too much, so I want you guys to see how it all played out. 